The Impact Lounge is the number one place to be for the real Impact Wrestling fans. Hello and welcome back to another Impact Review at the Impact Lounge. I'm your host, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Ro. Good day to you, Ro. Good evening to you, Adam. I didn't get that one right. It's mid-afternoon, but close enough. Don't worry. But we'll get <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, first of all, before I start this week's show, I just want to give a shout out to well, to myself really, and BQ who who did an interview with Joe Hendry this week. So make sure you check that out. It's on the channel. If it's not at the top of your favorites, your subscribe list, make sure you do just uh, have a look for that uh, because it was uh, a really popular one, and everyone who has listened to it. Uh, has commented on uh, how much I enjoyed it and what a nice guy he was as well. So please do make time to listen to that. So yeah, it's on the channel. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a comment. What you, what you think about him and let us know uh, if uh, you think he's going to be a future star. So so that was just the first shout out today. But uh, for the first for the people who saw my the first time on the show, uh, we just want to make sure that you hit the subscribe. Make sure you leave us loads of comments down below this section that you're listening to on YouTube, and we'll do our best to answer your questions as we go through. What we tend to do, if it's your first time stopping by, is we ask you a trivia question to start off the show, kick off with a bit of fun, then we dive into your questions before the review. Usually takes about an hour. You can usually know if it's been a good impact if the show itself, that our review show is over now. That's usually a good uh, tester of the water, so to speak. So um, before we do that, a couple other things. I'm going to the Manchester tapings for impact in two weeks' time. This is really your last chance now over the next week or so to uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to get some live photos from the show as it happens and to check out some of the interviews that we're going to be doing beforehand. Uh, I believe that I've got two face-to-face -face interviews lined up. Uh, more on that most probably on next week's show when I find out who those people are. So if you want to follow me, it's at V2 Wrestling Show. And Ro, what's your Twitter handle there? RT Great underscore. There you go. So make sure you follow us on Twitter. And as I said, I will be posting live photos throughout the show. Although it is going to be on Twitch, um, you can get uh, up and personal with some of the stars as they most probably try and put me in a headlock and eject me from the building. Right. OK, so last week's trivia question. First of all, who was the winner of it? I think someone got it rather easily. There was a lot of right answers. Let's face it this week. Let me just go back to the comments and I can tell you that it looks like it was Richard Cartledge who was the first respondent to get it right. I don't think it was, actually. Although he's appearing first on my list, I've got a feeling it was Jamie Wisner. Anyway, guys, well done. First, second, I'm not sure. But anyone who answered, it was Robbie E. And the clues were, um, I appeared in a skit uh, where I was attacked by Edge dressed as Ric Flair on a WWE segment. This was after his road raid incident. Uh, and then I appeared alongside Cookie as Jersey Shore type characters and I eventually lost uh, my X Division title against Jay Lethal where Cookie was suspended in a shark cage. Uh, do you remember this, Ro? And not quite. No. All right, well, what do you think of Robbie E, by the way? Because a couple, quite a few people agreed with me that they thought this guy uh, was a good company man. He was, he was actually a very talented wrestler, sometimes maybe a bit hamstrung by the fact he was a comedy character. Maybe that draws a bit of parallels with Joe Hendry here. But um, I thought he was a great addition to the roster, always a solid guy to have around, always on the fringes of the tag team, always entertaining. So for me, you know, nothing bad to say about him. I've had him in my car as well. And I don't mean that as in had him in a sexual way i once chauffeured him from an airport to a wrestling venue there you go and to be fair mickey james is in the car as well so uh there you go that, that's that's my name dropping for the night <laughs> bro what did you think of him yeah you know what i thought i first liked when he was uh because i think when he initially debuted he was under rob echoes and i liked his look i thought with the jersey shore gimmick i think they ran it ran its course because we seen him carry it on after the show had kind of like phased out so, you know, it's it's crazy that he was never repackaged. So, you know, I thought he was a, a fine hand. I mean, he uh, gained some mild success. Well, I don't want to say mild success, but, you know, exhibition title, I think the TV title when we had a television championship and then as well as the tag title. So I thought he was all right, but I thought he was one wrestler who desperately needed to be repackaged. Just, just a few more who got it right. Uh, we had Luke Avery. We had uh, the J-Rock Freak. 
Uh, they all got these right as well. Hakeem Fullerton. Well done to all of you. Obviously, as I always say, my questions are way too easy. So that leads us on to, to Rose trivia question for the week. Let's go for it. All right. Who am I? And here's your three clues. I won my first X Division championship match in a gauntlet for gold. And then the group that I was a part of featured tag team champions who later on both became world champions. And then finally, Trevor Murdoch once thought he was me in a match and it didn't go the same. I mean, it didn't go the way as he planned or for his opponent. Who am I? Okay, I, I think I know this one this week, but all right, that's uh, that's your questions for this week. Now, at this point, we usually go on to the uh, comments section from uh, last week's show. And I do want to apologize to, to someone who said that we spoiled something last week. Uh, we, we talked about a spoiler. If we did, uh, it was one of those unconscious things where we didn't mean to do it. And, and besides, the one thing I would like to not justify it, but just to say that impact themselves on their social media had spoiled uh, the thing that we revealed last week but just to, to rest you know to put your minds at ease this is a spoiler free review and that was a slip up by us so many apologies for that and we will try keep in check uh, where we can in the future so uh, apologies to the guy who pointed that out it was funny because uh, when I read it I was like thinking what did we actually do I can't, I can't actually remember doing it but there you go so sorry about that um, so, Ro, what, what have you got from the comments this week that you want to tackle before the review? All right. The first one comes from Renegade Otaku, and it's, he asks, what do you, or I don't want to preface him being he, well, they ask, what do you think is next for Congo Kong? And he, I mean, he or she had mentioned that they think he would fit well in the tag team division. Well, Congo Kong wins the title next week's show, doesn't he? Ah, sorry, no, I'm just joking, you guys. That was a spoiler joke. Uh, he doesn't. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, so uh, what, what are your thoughts? Well, Kong Kong, I mean, we've talked about it before because both of us really, really like him. And I'm sure we'll talk about the segment that he did this on this week's show uh, at the pool with Johnny Impact, which um, yeah, was, was, was quite funny. But um, he is a guy who, a bit like Abyss, who you feel could most probably be slotted in to any feud at any point you know he's always going to be a menace the problem that he's got at the moment he's that he's been on quite a few losing battles you know he's faced um brian cage he's facing johnny impact at the moment and he's been on the wrong end of those victories isn't he so it, it, it's hard to keep on promoting him as a monster if that's what happens you know uh, and he eventually loses the feud so i don't know i'd like to see him maybe become a bit of a bully and take out, you know, the smaller guys and those kind of things. And, you know, I would even consider him, you know, someone to eventually beat Brian Cage clean, you know, do something like that, get, you know, someone who we can get the rub from it. I mean, he's always going to be there or thereabouts. As I said, you could throw him in, but I, I don't know. Jimmy Jacobs, how long is he going to be sticking around as his mouthpiece? Is that going to be it for good? You know, is he going to be like Mr. Fuji? Um, I, so I, it's really hard to tell. I, I just don't know where you go with someone like Kong. But the thing is, his wrestling is actually really good. And that, that's the, you know, the, the problem that you have is how do you have a monster who's a good wrestler keep eating losses and still remain relevant? Abyss, to some extent, had that problem. And to me, he's like a modern day Abyss. Yeah, you know, like I said, him not having no signature wins, I think that's what hurt him. I mean, if you were just giving him one... Even I, I mean, I would have even had him as hot as Moose was during the time. I would have had him uh, beat Moose. You could have draw, drawn that feud out a little bit more. And, you know, you still have Moose, you know, come up on the upper hand. But, you know, we see him anytime he enters a program with these uh, main event players, he comes up short. So I think that's something they'd have to rehabilitate because... The thing that I like about him, like you were stating about him kind of being like a monster-like character, I feel like every main event picture, you want, you kind of want that big um, imposing-like figure because then, you know, when someone beats him, like when we had, what, I want to say a couple months ago when we had Brian Cage versus Congo Kong, and, you know, it, it was a nice back and forth, you know, where you really didn't know which way it was going to go, and you could argue it was probably one of brian cage's toughest matches in impact um 
besides his uh, face off with Lashley the couple of times. So, you know, I I mean, there's a place for him. I, the tag scene, I mean, I'd imagine you'd want to find somebody as big as him. I don't know who else you could pair him with at the time. But I think most importantly, they just got to give him an opportunity to win some of these feuds that he's in. How about teaming in with someone like Jimmy Jacobs in a tag team? where basically Congo Kong carries the tag team and Jimmy Kate Jacobs comes in and does a few things and, and you know, is the mouthpiece. Could you see that being a tag team? See, it, for me, and this is just my own opinion, I think those tag teams work when you're talking about a face duo where we see, like, the small guy who runs his mouth and then the big guy who's, like, the muscle. But I think when you're talking heels, uh, I don't, just in my, like I said, in my opinion, I don't see it working the same way. So, I mean, without wanting to, you know, name drop, you know, people from other companies who are no longer there, but what about someone like Big Cass and Enzo? You know, a small guy who runs his mouth, a big guy who backs it up. Would you like to see them in Impact? No. <laughs> no? Either one of them or both? No. Uh, Really, ne neither one. I mean, if you really ask me, I mean, out of the two, I'd probably say Kaz, but really, there, there's no need for them. I mean, and watch... To, tomorrow is rumor that they've signed <laughs> yeah well there's also um oh, I, I don't know if this is a rumor this is not rumor about impact but i noticed that neville's no complete clause is now finished as well so he's free to appear wherever he wants is that someone you would welcome into the show you know i would but i would worry about where they would place him because i get the strong feeling that they would feel compelled to thrust him right in the main event and i'm not saying that he can't get there but I, he would be somebody that I would like for them to build to get to that point, not just throw him right away. I mean, if you're going to bring him on board, maybe have him mix it up in the X Division. And, you know, I hate to talk about old subjects, but this is where I say, you know, them not having a mid-card title, hurt. it kind of hurts in a sense because now, you know, people are either, you're either thrown into the X Division or you're thrown into the main event scene. There's really no middle ground. So... That, that would just be my thing with him. Well, if they were going to debut at him, he's obviously going to be another friend of Grado and Joe Hendry's because everyone who's British is friends or related in the wrestling world. You know, uh, you never get someone coming in and saying, you know, I've never seen you before uh, from the same continent. So there you go. Right. OK, we'll, we'll do one more question before we, we move on to this week's review. OK. And uh, I had actually answered, <clears throat> excuse me, this one in the comments. But this is from Whoopsie, and what they stated was, was can could we see Impact using the Twitch shows as a form of development for new wrestlers that are signing, but they don't want to throw on TV? You know, maybe you have them represent Impact in an Impact versus Impact match, you know, random shows, and then also have the developmental talent appear in most of the Twitch shows instead of one. Um... I really don't think that's a bad idea. I've been an advocate because I religiously watch Explosion. I really think for for either that or Explosion, that's the great a great opportunity to get talent who they're unable to f get time for on actual impact programming. You know, get them some some uh, some screen time. And then even for newer talents that they're trying to develop, you know, put them on those shows. I'm not saying those shows are throwaway shows, but, you know, you pair one of these upstarts against somebody who's a little bit seasoned. You know, they can really hone their craft underneath working with the seasoned vet. And then that way, once they get on television, everything is fine as far as, you know, working with the crowd and et cetera. So I really don't think that's a bad idea at all. Yeah, Um it's what has been noticeable is that we do these shows and i know they've been exclusive twitch shows but we don't see many of the matches outside of the impact zone now which is good it seems like they've got rid of that idea um so we, we talk about secondary shows I, I like the fact that they're doing these twitch shows and and i'm going to be going to one soon and you know it, it'll be great to see how it comes over as a live event and whether we actually see any of that on the main program right okay well uh unless there's any other questions ro should we dive into the review Okay. Oh, and before we do that, by the way, if you're enjoying this week's show and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's easy. It's a big red button at the top. Go and press it now and make sure you give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Don't care which one, as long as you give us some feedback. It's all good. Right. Okay. This week's show, uh, sponsored by um, the a a Automobile Association of America. Uh, watch out for Rogue 
Hispanic gangs driving along the streets. Uh, yes, we're going to come on to that later. What do you think of this show? Yeah, I thought it was good. Solid all around. I do want to talk about that OGs thing because it, it was a it was part of the show which everyone's been talking about. And I know we usually do these reviews in order, but I did think it was a great show. But I hated that segment. So can we start with that? Because I don't want to finish on a, on a negative, and I know it's not to the end. So let's start with that this week. A bit out of order, I know. But what did you make of that OG segment? I mean, it was no big deal to me personally, just because, you know, I was looking at the child and, you know, he seemed kind of like nervous to do do the segment. So they probably told him what he was going to do. But, you know, I think the thing where people kind of reach and I, I get it, you know, but they didn't it wasn't like they they killed the child or anything like that the way i took it is it was no different than you think about that angle that they ran shoot back in 99 where was austin i believe where he got hit by a car and i i took it like that and i even even on the uh impact twitter handle i re responded um i said richie will will rise because it's not like they killed you know killed him off but you know, once again, at the end of the day, and we, I guess where it's just, it's laughable to me, for people who don't really follow the product religiously, whether they're fans or casual, like, they have the highest criticism anytime the company does anything, you know, oh, that's tasteless, you know, and then it's kind of like pop meets the kettle black a little bit, you know, so it was no, it was no big deal. I could understand, though, what, for some where they would just look at it as just like, why, you know, using a kid. But I don't know, the way I took it, it was no big deal. It was like, wow, you know, a kid got hit. I mean, I guess the only criticism I would say is they kind of left him there by himself. I mean, it, it's, it was like every, all the adults moved over and they just left him there. Normally in society, <laughs> we, care, we uh, care for our children. So it, I think if they would have probably had Conan get hit, probably make a little more sense but you know to see the, the kid get hit it just they just left him there by himself to be fair conan's about 100 years old as well so you've got to look after the seniors so you know it was one or the other wasn't it i, I mean look, i have no problem with the, the storyline of a kid being hit by a car um and because of his acting abilities the kid most probably deserved it because uh, he was terrible but I, I don't know it was just it didn't sit right with me and, and it was just the whole segment just seemed really poorly produced. That, that's the thing that bothered me. And I keep talking about these segments, you know, that it feels like it, it's just terribly edited. And it, it just took me out of the moment because it just seems so poorly done. If you're going to run over a kid, you know, have some, I don't know, <laughs> some blood lying on the concrete. Have, have you know... I don't know, maybe show a bit of the action. You know, remember when Austin was hit by the car? By the way, I still can't believe Rikishi did it for The Rock, but there you go. Um, when Austin, you saw him bouncing off the bonnet. This just looked, I don't know, you're going to go controversy, go the whole hog, you know, get him hit. And it could have been, see, it didn't matter that it was a kid. I mean, that's the thing that's crazy about this angle. They were upset because it's a kid. I mean, if it had been someone in the 25 to 35 demographic, oh, that's fine. Don't worry. It's just the OGs running over someone again. You know, but, oh, it's a kid. Oh, that's that's terrible. So, you know, from that point of view, I don't, I don't care. But why, I don't understand why they didn't use an adult, you know, in this segment. It would have been just as bad, you know, uh, you know, from a c controversy point of view. And at least they could have done something interesting, like having him bounce off the bonnet, you know, uh, on the show. So anyway, um, I, I don't – where does this feud go from here? I mean, do they now have to go and kill one of the OGs gang members? Is is that the next segment? Did, did the OGs come back and say, you know, we're hanging it up? You know, that is that what we've done isn't right. Where, where do you see it going from here? I, I just see one more match, and I, I had joked about this on Twitter. I said the only way this ends right is you see Richie return, and he costs the OGs a match. I mean, the <clears throat> excuse me, a title match. So you just have them do like a tornado DDT or something. And uh, that'll get everybody going and stuff. That's why I say Richie will, will rise. <laughs> so, all right. Well, the, the other thing is as well, I don't know which about the segment here, but, you know, they're going to have to have some kind of gimmick match. We've already had a 51-50 street fight. We've had a hardcore, high school hardcore match. I don't know. Uh, they're all the same. They're all hardcore matches. So you think we're going to get a third hardcore match, do you? I got something interesting. I don't know how you would pull this off. It'd probably come across as extremely difficult. 
But what what about a um and I don't even know if it's ever been done in wrestling before, but what about a tag team last man standing match? Where both have to stay down or one of them or how does that work? Yeah, that would be that'd be quite interesting. Or tag team quit, I quit, you know, like a tornado, I quit. So one can say it at the beginning of the match and then carry on as long as the second one doesn't say it. That'd be yeah, that's that's interesting. There you go, listeners. Ro and I revolutionizing the business again. I love it. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, aside from that segment, though, I really quite enjoyed the show. So we're going to dive into it. So uh, what do we start off with? I think we had a recap of all the, the usual shenanigans uh, ending with Conan giving the, the slapjack to, to King. Uh, then they advertised what was going to be going on tonight, which was obviously the Mexican death match uh, or hardcore match of piñatas. Uh, we're also going to get Brian Cage speaking and Matt Seidel in action. So we started off very, very Dixie Carter era, WWE style, long promo in the ring. However, however, first time Eddie Edwards has been on the mic and has entertained me. So well done, sir. Well done. What do you think of this? Yeah, I, I like that they're continuing this. You know, this gives Austin Aries a program until his next challenger comes up. So I have no problem with this. You know, I, I guess the thing that I've just been looking at is just Killer Cross's role in it. Cause you know, and we had talked about this before. I just kind of worry that, you know, he, he might, it might be do him a disservice just for the route that he was already projected to go. So, um, but as far as the, the promo, um, great, great work. And then to have Moose come back, that uh, throws a, a nice wrench into you know, everything that's going on because, you know, one would assume now that maybe Moose is wants another title shot as well. Yay, Moose is back. You know, I love Moose. That's that's going to spike the ratings. No, I'm only joking. Moose has got a place on, on it. And I just hope uh, while he's been off, he found that character that he's sorely been uh, losing and lost over the years. So anyway, yes. Yeah, so Moose and Eddie Edwards are backstage celebrating. Alicia ran in to say hello. Everyone was happy to be back together again, except for Alicia, who obviously said to Eddie, no, we're not good. Um, what? Yeah, where, where do you think this is going? Uh, and, I, I, you know, I don't want to talk about spoilers because we already said we're not going to do that. But, you know, I'm talking more about Alicia. Do you think that they're going to try and separate her and Eddie? Or do you think that she's going to still be connected to him in some fashion? I think this they're trying to separate. And what I mean by that is where she, her, you know, her sole focus is you know, competing in the knockouts division. Whereas you think about prior, you know, previously it was more of, you could say his valet, even though she wouldn't always assist him in matches, but it was just say, hey, that's his wife. That's his wife. But I think this is just used as a way of like, yeah, they're together, but Eddie does his thing. Uh, Alicia's doing her own thing. Yeah. So uh, we obviously see Alicia a little bit later on in the show and we'll come back to her. Right. So up next we had Matt Seidel, Desperate need for a win versus Zachary Wentz, one half of the Radicals, along with Desmond Xavier. Is that right? Or did I just make that up? Yeah. So, by the way, he was good in the ring, this guy. You know, for a guy who's, you know, it's been a cold introduction in that no build up, no backstage promo, nothing like that. He, he was quite entertaining. And, you know, if they gave him a bit of a character and a bit of a story line, someone who I might have seen sticking around. You know, when I looked at him, I don't know why, not not that they look any alike, but maybe their moveset, but I was thinking Andrew Everett, and I, you know, I figured that maybe someone would ask, hey, should they sign Zachary Wentz? And you know, my, my whole motto with this is, if you bring on one, who are you getting rid of? I don't believe we can sign people and keep everyone around. I think one has to go. There has to be some type of consolidation, so... You know, if you if they were to sign him, no problem. I'm, you know, he looks like at least for the time being, he'd be destined for the X division. But obviously, with him it having the tag team with Desmond Xavier on the indie circuit, that'd probably be a way to go. But for Matt Seidel, yeah, this was must needed. You know, for all these promos that we're getting, you're wondering where where is it going, and uh, you know, it looks like it's going in the right direction now with this win. Yeah, I'm really glad about that. Namaste. Namaste. But yeah, Zachary Wentz, I would actually mind seeing him stick around and actually getting him and Desmond Xavier into the tag team um, setup. I know at the moment we seem a bit stacked with tag teams, but 
you can't imagine if Zachary Wentz went into the X division, or even if Desmond Xavier, you know, who we haven't seen for quite some time, starts challenging someone like Brian Cage. It's not going to be pretty, you know. They're not. We can't, I, I can't suspend my disbelief that either of these guys are going to win. Whereas you maybe put them in a tag team um, and then put them back into the X division as a tag team in a multi-man match against Brian Cage, then you can start seeing you know, like an X division type thing. Um, what's it called? Elevation X type match. You know, you could see them winning it if because that's what we used to have, didn't we? We used to have tag team X, to, you know, like the Motor City Machine Guns, you know, in matches. So that, that's what I'd like to see come back. And, and these guys, I can imagine, could pull that off. Yeah, you know what? Now, now that you mentioned it, that's right. You know, we used to have tag teams where, you know, they could work both the tag division and then always the when they'd have the multi-man X division matches. I mean, if you think, you know, if they had DJZ and um, Everett's still ill around. I don't know if they've been released or not, but let's just say they're around. You know, these two guys, the Radicals, as they're called, um, in there. And then you have Brian Cage and Matt Seidel and have a six-man Elevation X match at the next pay-per-view at Bound for Glory. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? You know, that that would really be, you know, I know it'd be maybe a spot monkey s- situation, but we haven't seen a good Elevation X. Is it Elevation X the one where it's, it's hanging? Is that what it's called? Yeah, no, Elevation yeah. Wait, are you talking about the one? Uh, are you talking about uh, um, Ultimate X? Ultimate X, the one with the ropes. Yeah, that's Ultimate X. Yeah, Ultimate X. Yeah, imagine seeing these these six guys, you know, doing that, and someone the size of Brian Cage doing it. It'd be amazing, you know, to steal the show. So um, yeah, that's why I say um, someone like Zachary Wentz can add, can add to the roster if placed in the right place. And let's face it, Desmond Xavier is not really doing much these days. Right. Okay, so anyway, the match was very good, by the way. I, I thought Matt Side. Do you know, I, it, you know, I said about how good Eddie Edwards was, and I've talked about this before. You know, I've, I've enjoyed him since he's become this character. Same with Matt Seidel, as soon as he turned heel and did all this, uh, you know, third eye stuff. Two of them uh, are just really entertaining and, you know, really are becoming, you know, favorite things on the show for me. Really good stuff. So, yep. So we had. Um, a segment with Brian Cage saying he was going to speak. This, this was a bit odd because they kind of built it up like he was going to be going down to the ring and doing an in-ring promo, but it was a backstage stuff. So so what did you think of this? Yeah, I thought it would have been better served had he came to the ring and did a, did a promo. I mean, as far as this, there was no problem with it. I mean, you know, like a, in babyface fashion, you know, he was giving credit to Phoenix and, you know, he was just talking about his, his accomplishments since being with Impact and now being X Division champion. So, I mean, they, like like I said, it just kind of just gave gave us a reintroduction who Brian Cage is, it, you know, with him speaking. But, yeah, I thought it would have been cooler had he came, come down to the ring and spoke on the mic. Yeah, absolutely. So so we moved into the, the GWN flashback at this point. And um, uh, obviously the, the match itself was the Legion of Boom! <laughs> against um, James Storm, or more specifically Kazarian and Daniels versus James Storm with AJ coming down in his moody phase and um, laying out Storm at the end as a, as a heel turn. So we don't usually talk about these very much, but th- this to me was quite an interesting one because all of these guys, ex- well, with the exception of AJ Styles, could come back very shortly to impact uh, so my question to you is, hey, what did you think of the, the segment? But also, if you could have one of these four come back, and I will include AJ in it, although that's never going to happen, who who would you have out of the four of them? Well, the, the first one, um, must I say, ever since AJ's become world champion, they cannot help themselves making sure to put him on these GWN flashbacks. And I prefer when they do show him. I like when they show his earlier stuff, like the mid thousands. But uh, yeah, you know, like everybody knows he made his name in TNA. So yeah, but uh, out of the four, I mean, like I said before, I take James Storm back. Okay, well, we'll we'll agree to disagree on that one. And this is going to be our vote for the week. Uh, We had someone come back with the hashtag Team Adam from last week. I'll be honest with you, I can't remember what I said to be on Team Adam, but uh, Roe is going to go for James Storm. I'm going to go back for Christopher Daniels, if I could have. Well, can can, can I take the two of them? There you go. 
I'll, I'll, I'll let you change your mind if you want. You can have the two of them back as a tag team. Bad influence. Would you have bad influence, Storm or, or AJ? Storm, because I feel like I feel, I feel like he didn't really get to climb the top of the mountain. I mean, he had his brief title run, you, you know, some years back. Whereas with the tag team, I feel like bad influence. They kind of uh, I don't want to say so much reached their ceiling, but they did everything they could as a tag team in TNA during that time. And then AJ, I mean. I mean, he, he did everything he could, you know, so I think with Storm, you know, you can get a lot of mileage and some great feuds with some of the talent that they have on the rise now. Well, there you go. As well as the trivia question, make sure you leave us either a team row for James Storm, a team Adam for Bad Influence, or a team, I don't know, who can be the third option? Team Tito, if you want to have AJ back. There you go. Tito always makes an appearance. Right, okay, so make sure you leave that trivia question and your questions of this week. Uh, okay, so we had KM of Falabar backstage. Um, I, I don't know why I, I talk about these segments because you know what, what I'm going to say each week. You know, I just love them. I, I think these two are great. And I, I know some people, I think, in our comment section last week were, were complaining uh, about the comedy section and you know they've over over grado over km of falabar but i i think these two are money i really do and they're not moving the needle but they'll certainly be moving merchandise backstage so um did you see where this was going um no not necessarily i mean as far as with the with the match that we got but you know it's interesting when you think about they tried to scrap it where they had a km turn on a fala and then they realized, okay, that's not a good idea. So they paired him back. And it's really helped KM get over because I hear them chanting KM, KM's name too. So, you know, this was a, it was great. This was a great pairing for two people. They really didn't have no uh, plans for, for the time being. Because you think a follow, you know, we really haven't seen him win too many matches. And then KM, they would make KM look like a goof. So, you know, this pairing has really benefited both guys. Absolutely. And, and it didn't um, Fala debut with, I want to say, is it Bukhara or something like that? There was a, was it a Croatian guy or something like that was his tag team part, I want to say. But yeah, no. Um, and, and you know what? What was really, there was two things I want to bring up. But the first one was during the match. Fala did some really good house show style work with the audience to get them animated to get them shouting km cheering for km you know it, it's what you would imagine at a house show if you've ever been to the media you see wrestlers play up to the audience to get the audience going and uh, and it did really good work and as you said people are, are chanting km's name it, it's, it's excellent stuff and you know these two have got over in absolutely the right way you know that they've they, they've been built not organically almost they, i know they've been put together but the way that it's developed has, has been fantastic and that's one of the benefit of having shorter tapings because you know if they would have gone for the full split the team apart and had you know another five weeks worth of tapings before they could change it um we wouldn't see what's going on at the moment so I, i'm glad that they they changed direction on this one but the other thing i wanted to mention i don't know if you noticed it but the the graphics the intro graphics uh well, we noticed them a few times during the matches, and I noticed it last week as well, but specifically on this one. Really like the entrance, you know, imagery that they have almost like a, I don't know if it's a, a close-up of the Titan Tron or whatever it's called, the equivalent, or whether it is, you know, the, the actual video they play and then cut to the Titan Tron. But uh, I really like uh, Falabar's, is, is it a panda shaking its finger saying, no, no, no. Very good. Yeah. And let me say on the, on the match, as far as the match, um, you know, it was exciting to see KM and Fala get a clean win. You know, nothing not dirty. Uh, where if Fala actually got to hit his finish, well, help him and KM got to hit their finishers. You know, I wonder with the Desi Hit Squad now, I wonder if they feel they want to pull the plug on them because we've seen so much stop and go with this team now. And it just makes you wonder, are they dead on arrival or are they just going to be another team? So, you know, it was interesting because you think about how Desi Hit Squad had started and then, you know, they've been on the losing end in you know, the past couple of episodes. So I'm interested to see what they decide to do with him. But I'm encouraged by KM and Fala winning. And, you know, I really think, in, you know, down the road and if they were going to do it, I'd probably do it maybe at, you know, a Bound for Glory or some type of big event. It wouldn't surprise me to see them put the titles on KM and Fala to be that over. And not be a, uh, be champions. I mean, that'd be a uh, a disservice. Be doing them a disservice. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and you know what? I I was going to ask exactly the same question about the Desi Hit Squad. You know, what do you think they're going to do with these guys? Because it does seem well. It, this is a feud now because it's, this is the third match. So you imagine there'll be a fourth one, possibly a fifth one. You know, and Desi Hit Squad. I've just got no momentum at all. Although they had two wins, the crowd couldn't care less about them. And the problem is, is Gamut Singh, because the two guys, that, you know, the two wrestlers are actually quite good. Now, I think there's, isn't there rumours that they're going to be adding more members to it? If you were Don Callis and Scott Demore, what what would you personally do at this point with them? I mean, you still, you know, you don't want to um, panic. I'd still, you know, give them a shot. But, I mean, best case scenario, split them up. I think you can thrust uh Rohit into the X division and then I really like the Grisinder guy. So I mean I think you could put him, you know, in the mid card and you know have him work his way up. I mean there's a place for them, maybe not as a tag team. Or hell, have them drop the whole Desi hit squad and, you know, still tag but under a new gimmick. Absolutely. I think they'd need to get rid of uh a Gamut Gamut Singh. I forgot his bloody name now. Uh it is Gamut Singh, isn't it? Um I think they just need to get rid of him. He, he sucks all the energy out of it. And I feel really sorry for Garinda because until you mentioned it two minutes ago, I couldn't have even told you his name. Uh, and that, that shows how poorly they've done with this uh, in that they've debuted a guy who, you know, he, when he stands next to Rohit, you can obviously see he's a big guy, you know, so he's athletic, he's well-built, those kind of things. And yet they've given us zero reason to care about him. They've given him no personality other than taking a beating from Mr. Zero personality himself. So, I'm with you. I think that I think personally that you should get Gamut Singh to give him, you know, uh, uh, once again a, a hard lesson, you know, of hitting them, and then they turn on him and they basically beat up Gamut Singh, and that's the end of Gamut Singh, you know, and they, and then that way they almost turn face by default uh, or something like that. But anyway, so yeah, I, I agree with you that they there's a place for them, but under this kind of package that they look awful, they look absolutely awful. Talking of which. Onto Katarina's acting abilities and Grado and Joe Hendry. Um, what what did you? Well, so much to talk about this. Obviously, we got the those three talking, and then we've got the Scarlet Bordeaux bit afterwards. But let's start with uh, Joe Hendry. Make sure you check out the interview. Uh, Katarina and Grado. What do you make of this whole segment? Um, not nah, and you know I understand we got a lot of things take their time, but I'm ready for all this to be over. For the sake of Joe Hendry, because, you know, after listening to the interview, like, I really think he's going to be a guy within the next year or so. We're going to see him make a tremendous leap. And I know he has aspirations of being Impact World Champion. I mean, it's not inconceivable to to see that happening, you know, given the right build and everything that it takes. So, you know, I really want them to kind of kind of I don't not so much pull the plug, but just kind of expedite what's the end game in this. Or at least in Joe Joe Hendry's part, because we know what great of what we're getting. He's <clears throat> excuse me, he is and has forever been a comedy character, and there's a place in that in on a wrestling show. Like you can't just have just just pure wrestling. You got to have some storyline, backstage segments, and some comedy. So I I'm just ready for them to kind of um, you know finish this so Hendry can move on to bigger and better things. And I will say, as much as I love this show, I don't know if I could ever forgive Impact for showing Grado shirtless dancing on a pole. I mean, that's the <laughs> image I really didn't need to see. So, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, why was Bobo so entertained? <laughs> I, I mean, to, 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 to each his own. And then I think with Scarlett's character, and I had uh, mentioned on a Twitter, and once again, you know, for those who don't catch Explosion, I really recommend it there. They've been changing it up a little bit. I mean, they still it still would be nice for them to add more matches, but they had Scarlet Wrestling, and, you know, it had mixed reviews as far as her wrestling. You know, some think she's not really good. I think she's competent. Like, when I'm watching wrestlers, I'm not really looking for the mat technicians. I'm just, you know, looking for them to, you know, I guess tell a story in a sense or do some cool moves. So... I think just for the time being, it seems like that since they're not ready to thrust her into the knockouts division, they're, they kind of have her in this bit. So I, I guess for in Grado's case, it gives Grado something where he's going to be maybe in some type of love triangle. Um, 
But yeah, just overall, I, I really want to see Hendry move on from this. Yeah, and also Eli Drake. Uh, obviously, they're having their, their third match very, very shortly, um, which being in the UK, being Joe Hendry's debut, I, I fully expect him to win. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully both Eli Drake and and Joe can move on to bigger and better things. I still think that after that match, we're still going to get a bit of grey dough. And it could very well be that we get a mixed tag match, you know, of Scarlet and grey dough versus Joe and Katarina, possibly. I don't know. Um, that may be the way they go. Because it did seem that, you know, Scarlet was kind of leading grado on and is maybe going to be his new girlfriend i don't know it was it was it was all very strange i still don't really understand what the smoke show is um you know I, you know what's the point of it is it as i said like an agony out thing last week i still don't know but um big big kudos to uh scarlet bordeaux's halter neck top which nearly did a terrible job of holding her breasts in uh they nearly fell out um so uh good work to those anyway well done to the upholsterers on that one right okay moving on so we had Kiara Hogan versus Alicia. And uh, it's strange. I talk all the time about how I don't like Ali. And someone else mentioned this week, you know, the, the board of a character as well and those kind of things. And in this segment, Ali didn't really need to be out there other than she cut the promo at the end. But that seemed to be the only reason why she was out there. And it's annoying because Kiara is kind of saddled into this, but... Uh, you know, judging by next week's title match that they've announced, which is a three-way, uh, Kiara doesn't really need to be involved with Ali. So I, I don't know why Ali was out there, to be honest. You know, with regards to the match itself, Alicia is absolutely tiny. I mean, I talked about Madison Rain being small and looking physically uh, like no threat at all to anyone. Alicia, I reckon, is smaller than Madison Rain. She, she looks tiny out there. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed that. You know, I did. I think this match, and not to be, you know, critical of these two, but I think these are the type of matches that we need to have an explosion. Because you know, it was not. There was some, you know, sloppiness in the match. And like I said, I'm not this, you know, match aficionado where you know I expect everything to be crisp. But I think matchups like this, while you can have a place on Impact, I would prefer them to kind of be the opener, or like I say, you know, on explosion. Yeah. I, I know exactly where you're coming from because this story, this match had no reason, did it? I mean, it was pointless. You know, it didn't matter if you won, you lost. There was no reason for it. Why were these two fighting? Why does anyone care? Uh, and that's a problem if you've got that on your main show, but especially when you've only got two hours. Give us a reason to care. And this is most probably, and there's nothing wrong with the match, by the way. I thought the quality of wrestling was actually not bad by these two. I thought it was quite good this week. But uh, why have this match on the show? You know, I would have rather have seen Kiera fighting someone in a squash match, you know, which went shorter and then have Ali cut the promo afterwards, you know, because this match, it wasn't a squash match. It was competitive, but, you know, for what essentially was pointless, it, it took up time, you know, and they didn't need to do that. So um, it annoyed me a little bit. And, and the other thing as well is Sue Young, you know, she, you only ever really see her at the pay-per-views, don't you? You know, she, she doesn't really appear... Well, I know, I suppose she wrestled last week, but, you know, they, they could be doing backstage segments with her. And you just had Ali challenge her. You've got uh, Tess is also cutting backstage promos. And Sue Young's at home. I, I don't know what Sue Young's doing at home, you know, watching repeats of the Monsters or something. I don't know. Whatever she's doing. Uh, she's not on the show. It's just weird. Um, the, the women's division at the moment, I think, is in a, in a bit of a mess. Well, they've really mismanaged her title reign like this stems back from the moment they put the title on her like she should be the focal point so she's the champion and this happens a lot in wrestling sometimes and you can argue maybe they're not behind it and i don't know i don't think it's so much they're not behind her i think it was kind of like you know they put the title on her to capitalize on some of that shock value they had with her but now they just you know, like, would it really surprise you next week if she drops the title? I mean, you, 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 I mean, you, between Allie and Tessa, you know, I mean, you can go with Allie, that make her a three time champion, or you can go with Tessa, who's just been, you know, knocking it out of the park since her arrival in Impact. So, in once again, it, it, if anything, it makes me worry that whenever they do take the title off of Sue, Will she just fade into the sunset? We see this happen so many times with a lot of these champions. 
and it's unfortunate to happen while she's champion. So if it's happening now, you know, one could only, you know, imagine. And if they, the last thing I want to say is if their, their plan is, oh, we'll wait till Rosemary gets back. Like that's, you know, she's injured and there's a, that's a serious injury that Rosemary sustained. So, you know, if she doesn't come back till say beginning of next year, you can't have Sue Young just kind of just waiting, 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 waiting. You know, you got to find something else for her to do. So I really feel like they really have done her a disservice, you know, in her title reign. Same with Tyre as well. You know, she's kind of disappeared and them just saying, well, for her. Do you know the Sue Young thing? It reminds me of Eli Drake last year where the the feud, the, Eli Drake was involved with Johnny Impact and Alberto Del Rio. No, Al Potrone is for his name then. And the focus was on impact versus Alberto. And it's the same here. It's, it's Tessa versus Ali. And don't get me wrong. That's the more interesting feud in this one, but Sue Young is, is almost an afterthought in her own title defense. And I, I just think that this, this is poor booking and it's a shame. But having said that Tessa did a stellar job of selling the purge. Is that what it's called? You know, the mandible claw, you know, saying I don't want that filthy thing. She, she's brilliant. She, she really is out of all three of them. She's the, she is absolutely the star. And if you're going to build a division around someone, she's the one to do it around. Anyway, we'll, we'll move on from that because I, I, I do want to go poolside with Congo. Uh, I think, do we miss something? I think we missed a match before we get to that point. Um, I'm not you're sure. Right. You're, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, my just quick thoughts. This made Congo Kong look like a goof, and <laughs> I mean, no, 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 if fans or buts about it. And I really wish, you know, when they do have this match, I really think Congo Kong needs to win. You can have Johnny Impact win the fuse, but we know that's not going to go that way. But this made Congo Kong look like a goof. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't know for some reason I, I would. I just have the vision of Kongo Kong turned up at a pool party in his usual wrestling gear. So, I mean, you know, did he get a cab dressed in his wrestling gear to the pool party? I mean, is he just wandering around all the time? What, what does Kongo Kong wear on his days off? Is it just his wrestling gear? Uh, if any of you know, if any of you seen a picture of him around town, let us know. Drop us a, drop us a tweet. But no, you're right. It, it did absolutely make him seem goofy. And let's face it, if you're thrown into a pool, You'd get back out, then you'd try and beat the shit out of the guy again, wouldn't you? But the segment just ended when he got thrown into the pool. I mean, it, it, I know it was just filler and a bit of fun, you know, to keep the feud going, but it, it was just silly, wasn't it? Um, it didn't really add anything. No, it didn't. And you know what? He would be another guy, too, where if you were having him on you know, with the whoopsies comment to um, elaborate on his comment, he would be a guy that would benefit if you had him wrestling on the twitch shows or have him wrestling on explosion you know for him you know to get some some wins but yeah i just uh, i was just like man it's terrible because you know we f we all fully expect you know when they do face off that johnny impact's gonna win this and you'd think kong kong needs to way more to make him be a credible yeah before before we move on bro um to you know the matches and the other bits of promo coming up on the spoilers that i'm reading sorry the results that i'm reading i should say it doesn't mention anything about the the backstage promo where trevor lee and the cult sorry trevor lee caleb and eli drake are talking backstage trying to be his fr being Eli drake's friend and uh, Eli tells them, you know, they're a bunch of losers and, you know, stop following him around and those kind of things. And I didn't really get this because out of nowhere, it seems like the cult of Lee have now become the cult of Eli Drake, uh, which is a bit strange because obviously the point of a cult is to have a cult leader. And if it's the cult of Lee, it should be Trevor Lee. But suddenly, you know, uh, Trevor Lee's walking around like, a, you know, a puppy eyed teenager, you know, trying to chase around Eli Drake. Now, these three guys, I think all of them are amazing. I don't really see where this is going. And, and also, I think it devalues Eli Drake a little bit. What, what did you make about th this kind of scenario that's playing out? Yeah, I don't like it. And, I mean, I know not to overreact, but, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, you think, you look back a couple months ago, you could argue that the Cult of Lee were the major threat to LAX's tag titles. And then, you know, they've kind of just fell by the wayside, so to speak. And, you know, me being a big Eli Drake fan, like, I'm fine with him working other programs that don't revolve around the world title picture, but he needs to be seen in that light. Like, I I mean, 
I guess what I'm just trying to say is these three participants, there's so much more that they can be doing and they can be used to a better capacity. And, and I feel like what they're doing right now, it just screams creative has nothing for us. I, I think you, you absolutely hit the nail on the head there, but they could be doing so much more. I mean, I don't have a problem falling down the card, but what I just don't like about this, this program is that, you know, the cult of Lee don't need to be hanging off the tails of Eli Drake. And I don't mind being in a program with him, but I just don't see, you know, they're kind of moving away from, well, the cult of Lee, you know, the, the cult is, is no longer a cult, so to speak. So it, it seems strange. And, you know, and I don't mind the fact that they're on a losing streak and those kind of things. I mean, Trevor Lee, I can't remember the last time he's won a match. I mean, if you put him in a match with Robert Ranju by himself, uh, the two of them would both lose somehow. Uh, that, that's how bad that's how bad it's got for Trevor Lee. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to the match in a, in a second, because as I said, I know they had a backstage skit, but I wasn't sure where in the, in the show it was, because the spoilers results that I'm reading don't really explain it at all. You know, don't even mention it. So we, we next had a, a Rich Swan segment uh, where he was walking along with uh, Alicia Atout, uh, back, well, not backstage, outside the complex. And uh, once again, I found this a little bit off. I, I, I don't know what it was about it that I didn't like, but... Uh, I, well, it was rich. It was actually rich. I didn't like. He, he seemed really strange. But one of the things that he mentioned that was, was bizarre for me, for my money anyway, was uh, the X Division. He said he wants the X Division title because wrestlers like him, Amazing Red, P.T. Williams, and A.J. Styles, etc., have won it. Now, what I found bizarre about this was the fact that he mentioned Amazing Red. I, I don't know if you if you caught this, and it just seemed one that was a bit out of the blue. I mean. Did you, did you rate Amazing Red, first of all, that highly like uh, Rich Swan did? And secondly, what did you think of the segment? Um, I think as far as Amazing Red, I want to say his second run with the company or when they, it seemed like they repackaged him a little bit. I think that's where he gained the most success because his early run in, you know, for those of you who followed early TNA, you know, they used to always have a thing with the X Division where they'd have a whole bunch of X Division guys who, you know, would be in there for spots, but they never were really credible challengers for the title. So a guy like Amazing Red, uh, <laughs> D-Ray 3000, Shark Boy, all these guys, you know, they'd be thrown in the mix. And Red, you know, he was he was great at what he was uh, able to do during the time. And then I think he had come back to the company and that's where he gained success. I think he had beat Samoa Joe, which was like a huge win for him. So um, as far as the segment, I mean, I have no problem with it. I think the moment that they signed Swan, he's just tailor made for the X Division. You know, I it's and not to limit him and say that they can't do more with him, but he just screams X Division. And it just brought me back to, you know, you look at the champion, Brian Cage, and, you know, he's a different he brings a different type of element to the X Division being while he can high fly, you know, be a high flyer. He brings on that uh, power and that muscle. But then you see a lot of the people who are integrated in the X Division are all of similar stature. And with Swan being no different. So I, that was just kind of one of the things I'm like, as much as they want to scream, it's no limits. And this is kind of our default mid card belt. I mean, you look at the people who compete in the division, you know, there's not much diversity. But with that said, with his promo, I thought it was fine. Um, I, From what I've seen in, in the couple matches that he's had in Impact, he's delivered. So I look forward to it. But in my last point is, I hope, because I fully expect him to be champion somewhere down the road. I hope they don't sleep on Desmond Xavier. I feel like there's a lot with him. I'm very high on him. And he's somebody that I really want to see get the opportunity to run with the title. Just just on Rich Swan, I think he's been very good since he's debuted. I know he's picked up a loss, maybe even two. Uh, but uh, no, I, I like the way they've debuted him. It's a high energy uh, guy. You know, e even the way they've packaged him. When he's come in, obviously as a face, which is great because, you know, they need face. Although there seems to be more face in the X Division anywhere else. But no, I, I like Rich Swan. And just my final part in the whole segment, if anyone knows where I can pick up those pink trousers he was wearing, ah, oh, drop me a line. They were awesome. Anyway, um, moving on, we had a couple of uh, quick backstage segments now. We had uh, a promo from Pentagon, and I'll lump it together with the promo from Austin Aries saying he's going to have a match with Moose and Eddie Edwards next week uh, with him and Killer Cross. So, anything to add on these? Because to me, they they were just pretty much nothing promos. 
it's just you know with pentagon it's just a shame man that they find something with him now with the, the you know his, these backstage uh, promos you know where was all this before it sucks that it took them this long absolutely absolutely so then we we did get into the match of uh, trevor lee and caleb conley versus mr atlantis great name and brandon tidwell now we had eli drake on commentary during this match as well who i thought was was gold although it didn't last very long i thought eli drake was great and what i really loved was the way that don Callis uh basically welcomed him and and wanted just a nothing more to do with josh during that time i thought it was very funny but uh, eli drake is whatever he you know no matter how crap the gig he's given on the show he always delivers and he makes it entertaining doesn't he yeah i agree but you know this match by the way what was quite surprising was when he saw these guys backstage it looked like you know normal human beings you know as in fairly big or, or whatever but when they were actually in the ring versus let's face it x division wrestlers in in Trevor Lee and caleb they looked tiny but um you know this this was just to continue I suppose the storyline of Trevor Lee and well, the cult of Lee just picking up losses, but uh, it was fun. I didn't mind this at all. Um, I don't think it damages Trevor Lee and Caleb at all because it just you know plays into their storyline. Just the same as when Triple H lost to the Brooklyn Brawler one time on on, on Raw, you know. So I don't think it does them any harm at all. But uh, yeah, it was a bit of fun. And what I really enjoyed was just the the commentary. I just hate it from the point of you think about the moment that we got the cult of Lee as an actual tag team. They've never really had that convincing win. A lot of their wins have been from, uh, you know, dirty tactics. And I guess, obviously, that's something that you expect from a Hill tag team. But I, uh, um, yeah, I just wasn't a fan of this. And, you know, it just had me wondering. And I always wonder when you see some of these wrestlers who gain success early on in their careers under impact. And then once they lose the title, they just kind of just fade out. And like you were saying with Trevor Lee, you know, when's the last time he's won? You know, he just he just has faded into the background. So, um, you know, but as far as this as far as this angle between the Cult of Lee and Eli Drake, I'm interested to see how it plays out. So I'm going to give it a chance. And just on the Trevor Lee thing, because. You know, we talk about if some people come in, that, that means that someone's going to be going out. And Trevor Lee and Caleb haven't done much on the show recently. And, and especially as, as they're picking up losses, that usually signifies that they might be on their way out. But for Cult of Lee fans, um, one bit of solace I can offer you, you know, I hope they don't go because I think they've got a lot to offer. But, you know, Trevor Lee is coming over to Manchester for the, the Manchester tapings. I don't think they'd be bringing him over if he was on his way out and I don't think he would bother agreeing coming over if there was, you know, if he was on his way out. So, you know, that, that looks positive that they are going to be sticking around. And, and just a final thing on, you know, um, on the two of them as well. I, I think they have got a lot to give and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up with them having a segment with Scarlett Bordeaux in the same way that Falabar and KM have the same way that Grado has. It wouldn't surprise me if Scarlett Bordeaux became their um, their mouthpiece. And I know we keep saying, who's who, who's she going to kind of be the valet for? And, you know, but but these ones, these guys need it more than Kim and Falabar do. Uh, although I love Trevor Lee, you know, I, I think if they had someone like Scarlett Bordeaux, I think it would elevate that tag team. Any thoughts on that? You know who I would pair, pair with, but I mean, I don't know if... if, if I, I guess... I would I would who I would pair her with would be Joe Henry, assuming if you were gonna turn Joe Henry Hill. You know, nice rising star new to the impact. Um, you know, what better way to have a valet like that? Uh that's who I would do pair her pair See, her with. I, I can under I can understand that if it wasn't for the fact that you had Katarina there and you also had um the fact that Joe Henry could talk. You know, I, I really when you want a valet, you want someone who maybe not a brilliant on the mic someone like johnny impact i would suggest you know could really do with her if they turned him heel um but yeah i, I think that we might see the scarlet bordeaux siding with grado after the katarina and joe hendry fallout you know as i said in a mixed tag somewhere but you know I, I could also see her with the cult of lee but anyway we'll soon see right okay we had the og segment next and we've already covered this but uh Yes, um, I hope Richie gets well soon. 
<laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh at vehicular homicide, <laughs> uh, but that was funny. Honestly, I'm just thinking back to it now. It's still making me laugh how bad it was. Right, all right I, we'll move I, on to the main. Oh, I'm sorry. Add, I just want to add a word of comment. You know, the one takeaway I took too, I just said, I can imagine him going back to, I'm going to guess he's like in fourth, fifth grade. Man, you know, I was on Impact Wrestling and I got hit by a car. Oh, what? That'd be the, you know, be the talk of the school for the first couple of weeks. Oh, or judging by the ratings, people would say, what's Impact? And then they'd, then it'd be the talk of the town. But um, <laughs> no, I, you're right. I mean, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? To, uh, to say, yeah, I was run over by Hernandez and um, Homicide. Homicide, there you go. Uh, anyway, main event time. I love this, and I know it's been picking up a lot of plaudits, but I, I, I think Sammy Callan, as, as we've talked about before, is just, he's on the money, and he, I mean, he really is, uh, I, I can see him getting, you know, I wasn't sure when we talked about would they put the title on him, I can see him getting the title, because he has been such a good company man, on and off screen, you know, over social media, those kind of things, this guy is legit, and he can wrestle as well, and this match, I loved it. I, you know, it was another hardcore match with Piliatas, but I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, they found a unique way to put it because I think that's a lot of times, like as you mentioned earlier, how when we get these kind of uh, gimmick-like matches, they're all essentially a form of a hardcore match or a street fight. But using the uh, Legos and Piliatas and everything that they use, it gave a unique twist to it all. And I'm glad that uh, Callahan got the win because I really felt he needed this I mean I think with him you know the way that he's positioned you know he can he can eat a lot of losses but he need he needs to win every now and then and I think this helped him so now if they continue to feud and he loses anymore then I mean I think it's fine but I think for him to get this win I think it was a big deal and you know as far as with Callahan I mean I think if you did uh, you know, for the end of the year, if you did, you know, best matches of uh, Impact 2018, he's going to be in at least a good, everyone's top five. I mean, he's just, I mean, he's been probably one of the best signings they've had in some t- quite some time. Absolutely. And, and with regards to this match, we talk quite often about the fact that it was a pay-per-view quality match. This, once again, was a pay-per-view quality match. And, you know, even with the, not the false finishes, but, you know, the lots of kickouts of finishes, and things like that during the match, you know, a few times I thought, well, that's it. That's, that's, that's the match over. And, and it carried on, you know, with a, a kick out on two. So I, I just thought it was excellent. And, you know, it, both of the guys, you know, put on some really, really brutal moves. I mean, that, that pile driver through the chairs, <laughs> that looked like it hurt because it, I think Sammy Callahan dropped him at the wrong point of the chair. So it looked like he landed head first, which must have hurt at the very beginning of the match. And there was a few spots, you know, the um, what's it called? Fear Factor through the table the, outside, is that what it's called? No, Death Valley Driver sorry, through the table on the outside. That looked like, once again, it didn't go quite to plan. And these guys just kept on getting up. The, the only thing that looked fake in the whole thing was the staple gun. Uh, just by the very fact that you know, no part of his body looked like uh, it was bleeding or even cut up. But apart from that, it was honestly, I, I, I can't talk highly enough about this match. These two guys put on a clinic on this one. Yeah, I mean, another pay-per-view quality. I mean, he, I mean, it's something about him when you put him, I think he's reaching a level where I think you compare him in any type of feud and he'll make it work. And, you know, you just look back off of with Eddie Edwards. I mean, he's really, you can give him credit to making Eddie Edwards how Eddie Edwards is now. Because, I mean, people have had their opinions about him. But, you know, then he moves on to Pentagon Jr., who you know, was already good. And, and then with Phoenix, it's just, I'm interested to see what's, what's next with him. I'm sure this isn't over, but, I mean, it's just, this guy manages money. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, that was uh, that was the end of the show. And uh, I thought, top to bottom, it was the matches were excellent this week. Really thought that I enjoyed every single match up and down the card. The only thing I didn't like was the the OG segment, but you know we've already covered that. It was more to do with the production of it as opposed to the you know the sentiment behind it. But but overall, another strong episode. Maybe not quite as good as the last few weeks, but but all in all, you know, Impact is still knocking out the park, and and these ratings they're not moving now. Unfortunately, you know, we're, we're, we're around the, the 200,000 mark. 
you know, they might go back to 250, but if they stay on Thursday night on pop, I'm afraid the ratings are what they are and we have to get used to it. Uh, so we have to stop ignoring it or they have to think about what they do next. Yeah, somebody so, had left a comment about it and um, I'm sorry I don't have the browser up, but they were asking if they thought, you know, um, if you watch on like Fire Stick, does that factor in the ratings? And BQ responded no. So I think that's the thing. Like, look, I think we and we always talk about the ratings now, you know, week in and week out. You know, more we just just discussion kind of like to see like, hey, you know, are more eyes getting on the product? I think we just have to look at it is. You know, the product's being watched. It might just not be watched when it's initially aired. I think the key thing is people are watching it. The buzz is, uh, you know, they're getting the buzz that they want and they need and people are hearing about it. And it, it's going to help them in the pay-per-views. So, you know, and I, and I know, and sorry, I just wanted to add this. And I know um, that's kind of one of the things we never really hear about how the pay-per-views do. But that would really be the, the telling point you're right and you know as i said last week you know if they move to somewhere like a netflix or a, an amazon prime or somewhere like that you'll get an accurate reading of, of what the show is actually doing because as people stream it from there uh then you'll get an idea and the thing is they don't throw in the statistics from the gwn app either you know it's another thing that they, they don't take into consideration so the only person i would say that the ratings matter to are smarks on the internet or trolls on the internet who, who revel in the fact that they're lower than WWE. Uh, and secondly, the pop executives, or Anthem as well, just from the point of view that if they're getting low ratings, that's low ad revenue. And, uh, you know, that's going to obviously impact on on how much pop pay them to to produce the show. Uh, that That's why, for me, the streaming model has to work at some point. They have to find a way to stream on a main platform. I know you guys have other ones over there, like, is it Hulu and things like that? We don't have that in the UK, which is why, you know, I prefer something like Amazon or YouTube Red or, or whatever it may be. Right. Uh, maybe not YouTube Red. I think Netflix is, is the one that they would want to get on. And I don't understand, you know, where Netflix, okay, everything, you know, uh, I, want, I want to remake uh, Weekend at Bernie's into a TV series. Yep, you're greenlit. Why? Why can't? Why can't they? They go in at something like Impact. Surely, you know, what does it cost to make an episode? I think you know somewhere I read it was something like half a million an episode, which seems a lot. But you know, you know, I will say, and I, I wanted to ask you. Well, go ahead, finish your point. But there was something. No, else. no, that was it. That was it. I want to ask you, and before we get in, you know, close out. You know, you look at with with uh, all in coming up. And you think about the the Jericho Cruise, and I know with All In they're having something with um, D the WGN. I think they're going to air something. Do you think you know with the the, the success of um, well, I mean, I, obviously they haven't happened yet, but with all the buzz that both of these things have garnished, do you think if these really hit the mark that it will open the door for maybe where? Um, other dare I say stations you know open up to that idea of having wrestling on their network because that's always just been my thing that I feel like a lot of stations don't see wrestling as appealing you know they'll go with you know obviously the main company because it has a long tenure but I'm thinking if all in and the Jericho crews really go off well maybe that'll change the opinion of some and maybe they'll be welcoming to maybe an impact or you know some of these other companies getting tv deals a bigger well, TV deals, I should say. Well, that's the thing about All, all In and the Jericho Cruise. You know, as wrestling fans, we read about it because we're on wrestling dirt sheet sites and things like that. How much mainstream media are they actually getting, though? You know, and that's that's where you need to to get that exclusive TV deal somewhere else. You know, so I don't think I have a a, a lot of impact. Uh, to be honest, uh, I think that if anything, these things are good for the industry and these things are good for maybe someone like, you know, a streaming service. Because let's face it, if you're TV, you've only got a finite amount of time that you could put a two hour wrestling show on, you know. Um, and, and I know that if, you, if you're if you on something like Pop, which is it's someone else's channel, isn't it? Is it History Channel's station or, or something like or Discovery, isn't it, Pop? I can't remember what was that, Destination America. Anyway, Pop, Pop is someone's secondary channel. Um, so there, okay, fair enough, you could put it on, on, on the minor leagues. But on the mainstream channels, they've only got so much time and wrestling is not on their radar, which is why if you're on a streaming service, you don't have that constraint of, well, we've only got so much time we can put programs on. And I know that um, there was a guy a couple of weeks ago who was dead against it. But, you know, I would like to hear our listeners' thoughts. Would they like to see 
impact on either something like Amazon Prime, Netflix, or or um, YouTube Red. Now, here's a question for you, Ro. Do you have Netflix? Yeah, but I rarely use it. They, they take off every show that I like. So, I mean, I, I only, I really got it for my sister and then the occasional date night, you know, I'll pop it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... Well, well, pop it in. <laughs> you find to a successful date night, obviously. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> maybe on that note, we should get a run ahead of next week. Yeah, and um, I, and you know, we didn't even mention too much about it, but next week is the redefined. So you know, we're once again getting one of these uh pay per view like specials. So the card as stands is. Uh, X Division title match with Brian Cage defending the Impact X Division Championship against Phoenix. We're getting a knockouts title match, triple threat title match, I should say, with champion Sue Young versus Ali versus Tessa. Then we're going to get Rich Swan versus Petey Williams, Austin Aries and Killer Cross versus Moose and Eddie, and Eddie Edwards, I should say. And then the Smoke Show returns. So it's really looking stacked. Yeah, I love these uh, special shows. And, and and the problem that they've got at the moment is that on their regular shows, they're putting on such great matches. I mean, how do you how do you keep on raising that bar? I mean, it's a nice problem to have, but uh, let's hope that it doesn't fall flat. So, yeah, a good mix up and down the card there of, of all types of wrestling stars. Really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great show. Now, has this been – yeah, it has been filmed, of course, because we, we talked about the – Spoiler last week, which we won't do again. But uh, I, I was just wondering if it's been taped. When's the next set of tapings now? And, and is this the Mexico one? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think we got a couple more on this one, and then we're gonna get the Mexico one. But I think those Mexico tapings. I think something. Something they're gonna do. Run some type of big angle, and I could see a belt dropping. Who's? I don't know. But I'm really interested to see what happens. Uh, hopefully, it'll be at LAX. I, I think they need to get the titles off them. And they should have had to take the titles off them very a long time ago because that feud just doesn't need the belts. But we've talked about that before. So let's uh, leave on a high. Make sure you leave your comments below. Hit that subscribe button. Just tell us what you thought of the questions we asked you in tonight's show. And also just comments in general. We'll be happy to pick them up next week. Uh, give us a reminder of the trivia question if you've got it to hand. Yes. Three clues. Okay. I won my first X Division Championship match in a gauntlet for gold. I was part of a group that consisted of tag champions who later went on to both become world champions. And Trevor Lee, I mean, excuse me, not Trevor Lee, Trevor Murdoch once tried to impersonate me and it didn't bode well for him. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's know your answer below. And also don't forget to leave us your Team Adam, your Team Row, your Team Tito uh, hashtag for us to, to, to vote for. Who would you like to see back at Impact, at the people from the GWN flashback this week? Would you like to see AJ, James Storm, or Bad Influence? Team Adam was Bad Influence, Team Rowe was James Storm, and Team Tito was AJ Starr. So let us know that as well. But thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back next week, same time, same channel. And make sure you check out the Joe Hendry interview below this one. Have a great week. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and for more from the Impact Lounge, check out the videos below.